Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike, and today, finally, we're breaking down the Exorcist Believer Golden Retriever trailer. And look, so I swear to God, man, like the movie gods just hate me. It was a running joke while we were covering the Halloween David Gordon Green trilogy in such detail that every time there was a trailer for each movie or big news or whatever, I was always, it was right during my vacation. That that's We'd wait and wait for the trailer, do all the news updates, and then the biggest news would be the one week of the year that I was on vacation. And it's funny because there's no Halloween movie, there's no Scream movie announced yet coming out, and this week has been, I was just on vacation and having a great time and over and over again, just boom, boom, boom. And I know the Saw 10 trailer just came out. Some of this Jay and I are going to wait to do together uh, on our very next stream, which I'm finding out right now exactly when that's going to be. It could be very, very, very soon. So make sure you're subscribed and have the bell click so that when we do go live or we do have these videos come up with the latest movie news and stuff, you'll be notified of it. So I'm watching this, right? And the first time I see it come up on in the theater in at Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer, I don't know why I said it like that. The main thing that stuck with me was not knowing it was an Exorcist trailer. When the, the movie or the trailer opens up and it's like these two girls go missing, this, the dad drops them off for school, they go missing. You have the security cam footage and they're like, this is the last time they were seen. Everyone's looking for the little girls. Then they find them and they're and she's they're like, how long do you think you were gone? And they're like, oh, just a little bit. And he's like, you've been gone for three days. And I'll be honest with you, not having any just expectations going in, not knowing it was an Exodus trailer. At that moment, I was going, oh, this seems like a cool idea for a movie. And the rest of the trailer, I just really needed to let sit on me. I wasn't ready to really judge off of, of off of one viewing, but my opinion did change a whole lot as soon as I saw, I heard that, when it starts to play the Exorcist theme and I realized it was an Exorcist movie, all of my judgment skewed. And I think that's worth noting. But looking online, it seems like there's just two camps. Most people I've seen are like, that looks like hot shit. The, you know, the usual, why the hell are we doing this? What's the point? Let Exorcist just rest. No one's going to make it as scary as it was then. And there's no point in doing it. These movies have been done to death. And then the whole David Gordon Green, people upset about Halloween ends. So if you see people upset, that is why. is because it's by the writing team, Scott Teams, who did the Firestarter remake, which did not do well. He did, uh, he wrote Halloween Kills, which the dialogue was not well received. Evil dies tonight. And Scott Teams also wrote the most recent Insidious, The Red Door. Now, look, I'm not saying anything against the guy. I loved Halloween Kills. I did think that the writing was probably the weakest part of it because some just strange dialogue and whatnot. Uh, Insidious, The Red Door, I kind of felt the same way about. There was some stuff that was shoehorned into that movie with the frat house stuff, and I'm just like, why is this even in the movie? Some of the writing was not a fan of it. I did not even see Firestarter. And, you know, so that's all I have to go off of, of Scott Teams. So... When you look at a guy who comes on the scene after not having done much at all, nothing in the horror universe before he does Halloween Kills and then gets Firestarter, then gets Insidious, and now is doing the the requel to The Exorcist? He, look, he definitely has pictures of Jason Blum snorting coke out of a hooker's butt. I mean, he has to, to come out of nowhere and get these rotting jobs. And honestly, the rotting part of these jobs, none of them have been well received. And then there's a whole lot of people that are very salty at David Gordon Green for what he ended up doing with the Halloween trilogy. And you know, I'm gonna make a lot of Halloween jokes as we go through this, but I will say first and foremost, I want you to know, I enjoyed the Halloween trilogy for what it was, but I love everything Halloween. I, I appreciate it. Ooh. That scared the shit out of me, you guys. My headphones were dangling against my leg, and I thought the world's biggest fucking arachnophobia spider was just running up and down my leg like a slithery snake. I like it. I enjoy it for me personally. But as what that product was supposed to be and what David Gordon Green gave people, I think that they really fumbled the ball in a lot of aspects. So then when you hear that Blumhouse has given David Gordon Green, Blumhouse Universal Morgan Creek has given David Gordon Green the Exorcist franchise that they just paid $400 million for the rights to, that they're gonna stream day and date on fucking Peacock when they release it in theaters. You're paying $400 million for something. For You're gonna do three trilogies. <clears throat> David Gordon Green definitely doing the first one. Gonna release day and date with Peacock. The second two may go directly to Peacock. What the fuck is going on? And then you hear that the test screenings have gone awful for this Exorcist movie, which that never always means anything. That That's not a real sentence I just said. It's not looking great. So when this trailer comes out, there is just, if, if you look online and you see the hatred for this, 
And again, just the requels are getting so tired in people's eyes, I think. I think it was fresh-ish with Halloween 2018, bringing back Jamie Lee Curtis. But now Texas Chainsaw Massacre's done it. Blumhouse seems to really be trying to just run it back with the same shit. And I think that's... If, if you're wondering why there seems to be so much hatred around this movie, if you're seeing that vitriol online, there's your answer as to why. Let's get into the actual trailer itself. As, as I said, the starting point where the two little girls go missing and then they find them, they think they've been gone for just a little bit, they end up being gone for three days. You do see the other parents of the other little girl as these two right here, who I imagine, if I had to guess, are going to die. And, you know, that's something, I don't know why I have that feeling. I just feel like these are the two who are going to eat shit in, in, an, in an awesome scene. And because the, the movie focuses on the other little girl's parents uh, with Leslie Odom Jr. Uh, and his wife. So I just have a feeling these are going to be the people who are going to be the, the ones thrown to the wolf, so to speak, when it all comes down to it. But as we go on, there is some imagery here. And this is a David Gordon Green thing. Like, I want to say, oh, what is this? How does this tie into everything? Because this is why the, the search parties are searching for the girls or whatever. And you also see this here with Wicker Man. Not the bees! The goddamn bees! And whatever's going on there, I don't know. I'm not a religiotician. I just know that at first I want to go, oh, maybe this is some cool shit. And then... That's where we go back to the David Gordon Greenisms. It's like, well, David Gordon Green threw a lot of shit out there with the Halloween franchise and none of it ended up connecting. It was just like random ideas and thoughts and just a lot of stuff that was just left out in the wind and you could pontificate on it all day. Some of it just ended up not fucking mattering. And that's the kind of thing you're skeptical about when it comes to this for sure. Uh, the little girls go in there that it's that's a creepy scene. It reminds me of when they're in the hospital doing these tests. It does remind me of the scene in The Exorcist where they're doing the test on Reagan. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. Again, I think Leslie Odom Jr. seems like a good actor to me. I, I do like how they've casted the movie. Uh, and Dowd, I think it is an amazing actress. If you've never seen Compliance, that movie fucked me up, man. This scene, I was like, this is this moment right here is the first time I got an inkling of, oh, this is, this is, this could be kind of corny. Your typical, just run of the mill Friday night, let's scare the 12 year olds horror movie when she just walks up and slaps her hand like, oh, Billy on the glass. I, that was the first thought I thought, ooh, this is, that's lazy. And then we go to this next scene, which it's, I don't know, is it creepy or is it laughable? I can't tell, but it made me think of Step Brothers. you say you'll say that again just really generic horror and i do gotta stop for a second and say that we just did a blumhouse full tier list we ranked almost every single blumhouse horror movie they've ever done into a tier list and blumhouse makes a fuck ton of money nobody can take that away from them but when you sit back and take a look and you take off sinister and a couple of their really great ones um there was a lot a lot of their movies, the majority of their movies that either fell into sucks my butt Steve territory, like the darkness and things like that. Movies that were just half-assed and never fully thought out and they just slapped it out there and made a little bit of money at the box office and a huge amount of just mediocre, all right horror films. If you look at the hit, they've created successful franchises, but as far as classic, amazing horror movies, there's not a lot there and it's it's the track record seems like it's getting worse as they go along. I'm just saying take a look at it if you don't believe me. Blumhouse is more often than not putting out mediocre or less just kind of run of the mill horror films. And I'm rooting for them, don't get me wrong. I I love I love what they're doing putting movies out there for cheap. The model works great. I hope that they get it sorted out, but as of now, I think we got to objectively look at them and be like, "Hey, this shit is just not great." You know what it is? It's safe. That's what it is. It's safe. And especially the projects that they do with Universal uh, and the, the day and day. It's to me that just looking at it from my perspective, that union they have with Universal seems like it's all ran by Universal and Blumhouse does what just whatever they need to do to please them. I wouldn't be surprised if this movie ends up being PG-13 at this rate. And I know they made Halloween rated R, but you know what they did with Megan? They openly admitted, yeah, we put out PG-13 and then we made we asked you to buy a $20 version of the rated R version. I think Blumhouse can be sort of shameless with when it comes to their pairing with Universal 
on how they handle their horror movies. And that's just me being honest with you. And I think that's why people are concerned. And this, if I could say anything about it, so far seems very, very safe and your typical safe Blumhouse movie. And that is not what you want when you're talking about a fucking Exorcist movie. The most shocking, you can argue that part, or you can argue it's the most scary movie of all time, but it's fucked up. The things that are in that movie are gnarly as shit. And, and if you're doing a requel and going back and, and bringing all these guns out for this, you can't be safe about it. And that's, to me, the most damning thing about this trailer. Let's move on. What is this with the, this is what I'm talking about. This is some truth or dare corny shit. Uh, like, I mean, it's like every run of the mill fucking horror movie type gag right there. Obviously. So what happens is the girls start acting weird, you know, sneaking up behind him when he's brushing his teeth. If that's the case, my kids are definitely possessed. He starts having a seizure. They end up going to the hospital. Uh, you can tell kind of the, that's another thing with Blumhouse and universal trailers. They give everything away. Typically they do not shy about it. They've openly admitted to it. Ryan Turek, J J uh, Jason Blum have both admitted at different times, yeah, they show they show a lot in the trailer because they, they care the most about getting people in the seats. So you can expect a lot of this to be the major plot points of the movie, and it seems that way. The girls go missing. They come back possessed. They go home. They start getting weirder. The girl starts having seizures. They go to the hospital. He runs into Ann Dowd's character here. And then you've got this really just honestly just really just basic ass storyline dialogue where he's like, can you honestly tell me you've ever seen anything like this, which is straight out of seven. And she's like, no, but there are people out there who have. And I'm like, bitch, I have Google. We break out the Laurie Strode character. You know, we, we break out, we bring back the legacy character and it is Ellen Burstyn as Chris McNeil. And we knew that they were going to do this, but what's she really doing here? I mean, if you watch her in the trailer, she's just like... I wrote a book after what happened to my kid. I wrote a fucking book about it. I do YouTube videos now. And um, I've really just, you know, I've, I've taken this tragedy and I've turned it into content creation after I watched this Tony Robbins book and some Gary Vaynerchuk and it's really working for me. I don't know what's going on there, but all of a sudden she's a goddamn exorcist specialist and she tells them, hey, you know what you got to do? You got to try it all the different exorcisms you got to do like every culture has their own exorcism we're gonna have to do them all and then they show like different versions of it and i just hope that in this there's like a rocky four montage of them trying different like there's like a song playing in the background and they're trying all the different exorcisms and like everything just goes horribly like police academy wrong <laughs> that's just the idea i get but the idea i'm getting at here is i think what they're gonna do is that is that is how they're gonna do it. When you when you go back and watch The Exorcist, it, it sometimes is a movie of set pieces. You're like, oh god, here comes the crucifix part. Oh, here's the hospital part. And then meanwhile, there's that fucking face that's just like yeah, that pops up and scares the sh the shit out of you. But I think they're trying to go that route. So once they have the girls locked down in the room, they're gonna try the different exorcisms, and then the scary scene dot 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 next exorcism scary scene. That's just what I'm thinking so far. But, you know, here's where I thought, okay, it's, 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 it's not going to go there. It's not really just going to, and again, it's just a trailer. You got to give the movie a chance to really do it. But I'm just being honest with you about how I feel the church scene. It's so on the nose. It is just so like, if you have an evil dead movie, they've got to say dead by dawn. You've got her showing up at the church, walking down the aisle. Body in the blood. The body in the blood. Body in the blood. In that same exact voice we've heard from every fucking demon in every fucking possession movie over the past 20 goddamn years. It's the same voice. It's nothing new. And, and she's, she's in church. She's covered in blood. Everyone's scared. She's saying body in the blood. There's nothing shocking about this. Like, it should be shocking, I guess, if, if like horror movies haven't existed for the past 50 years. But this is just standard shit. And I think when you're going to fuck around with the exorcist, people want to be scared. They want to, you, you can't just make an average ass horror movie. And you know, I, I, I just don't know. Uh, they do show a little bit about what happened when the girls went missing. It looks like they found them here in a barn uh, together. And there's the dead horse there, which reminds me sort of, of the ring. There's a couple shots of imagery that I like here. I do like that. You wonder if it's like, reshoots or, or shot post or whatever to add stuff to it or not but the dead horse part's freaky they have this little part where they show the dogs fighting and and that's that's creepy that that gives me a little bit of the imagery of the original movie but they did that again with the prequels and stuff at times too so you can't really look too far into that uh another scene that's just to me just corny as it goddamn gets is don't be scared we've met before 
just being honest, it's like Linda Hamilton in Terminator. Like it just, I don't know how the performance is going to feel on screen when it's all said and done. But when I'm watching the trailer, it just seems like that. Hey, walk down this hallway, say a couple lines. It doesn't really fucking matter if it's great. You know, we just undusted you and we just need you to, to add some weight to this movie without really giving too much thought into it. And again, maybe not, but that's what it feels like when I watch this trailer. It feels like fan service. And I, and I think we're all over that when it comes to these movies. And they do hint at Reagan. Uh, they show the, her name being written down. They show her picture. She's not in the trailer, but you know, Linda Blair is in the movie. Uh, she did film on it for a couple days. So who knows how that's going to play out or what's going on there. But they don't, they merely hinted at it in the trailer. Again, going back to the fan service things. And then you got moments like this that are just. Yes, more than I'd like. Again, truth or dare, unfriended part three. This is, it's fine, but it's not The Exorcist 2. Like the actual sequel we've been waiting for to the original classic. Uh, it, it just, you know, and, and the, the original second Exorcist sucked ass, but like Exorcist 3 kicked ass. If you're going to go back and do this, man, you got to do it. And scenes like this where, oh my God, she's under the bed. <gasps> she's in front of us now. That is not going to fucking get it done, man. You got to dunk this shit. There are a couple scenes I liked. I'm rooting for this movie partly because, you know, I just want it to be awesome and I want to enjoy it. And again, shots like this are pretty fucking cool. And I love Christopher Nelson and I love his effects work. I thought he is one of the greatest things about the Halloween thing we got. And as you know, he's just a friend of the channel. We think he's an awesome dude. And I, I have no doubt he's going to crush the special effects on this and they're going to be badass. And you can see that with little shots like this. One of the reasons I'm really rooting for the movie to be awesome. And like the, the, the okay, I'm with you when we're stuffing the Bible into our mouths. I'm with you. Okay, we're cooking a little bit that's the kind of stuff we're talking about let's get fucked up with it and, and another thing that i guess they doubled up on here is like hey there's not one kid possessed now it's fucking two you better watch your toes sir God played a trick on you. the dialogue is not great when it's like they're beating in sync it's like god played a trick on you i'm like oh, fuck man is, is this the best is this the best, are these the best one-liners we're going to throw out? I really hope this is one of those situations where Blumhouse is deciding, no, we're not putting it in the trailer this fucking time. We're saving the good shit for the movie. I hope so, because God played a trick on you is about as lazy as it gets for one of these movies. But a positive, I mean, this shot specifically is dope as fuck. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's just a priest at the end of the movie walking in. I don't know. That shot is beautiful. It's very alien-like. There's a couple beautiful shots in the movie, and you got to give it to David Gordon Green and his team. Uh, whatever you want to say about Halloween ends, the cinematography on that was, I thought, beautiful. I thought they did a great job shooting that shit. You got some hereditary-ass shit going on here with Anne Dowd throwing a fucking Batman smoke bomb into the fireplace. <laughs> Some Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street type stuff with a hand going through the wall. That's weird. And then the, the last section of the trailer is probably the coolest in my opinion. But you do wonder how much of this is actually going to be gnarly like this in the movie. Or how much of this is in post where they're just doing it to make shit look more interesting. I don't know how that, that black and white type of sheen can really fit into the movie but this shot right here is haunting i think that this is the kind of thing you expect when you go to see an exorcist follow-up i want some stuff like this for sure but again they had to do this weird camera effect with it so i wonder how much of the movie actually feels like that or or is going to have that kind of uh, dark vibe to it but i really love these black and white shots that's gross that's gnarly i hope that's that cool in the movie and, you know, uh, and then there's this shot of Ann Dowd here with Pazazu behind her that is just creepy as shit. That's what I like. That gives me hope for sure. But yeah, and that's the Exorcist Believer trailer. And we already know the next one's going to be called The Exorcist Deceiver. That's another thing that goes against it. You already know there's a trilogy. So like how much is really going to get resolved here? Is it going to feel like a complete movie? There are more questions than answers even after this trailer come out came out and at the end of the day i'm hopeful for it there is tiny bits of hope in there for sure despite what we've heard about the movie but i i, I just it feels far too corporate and and safe and blumhousey and it's sad that i have to say that now like just to really make the impact an exorcist sequel should or to really be scary or leave its mark and it seems a little like it's destined to just be another forgettable Exorcist sequel. And at worst, 
a really bad Exorcist sequel or just really forgettable possession movie in general. I hope it's not, though. I hope it's not. There's signs of both. There is there's some signs of belief in this trailer, I'll say that. And Christopher Nelson and, you know, uh, there's some hope for sure. Uh, but there's a lot of they are who we thought they were going on too. Hey, don't forget to click subscribe and that notification bell so you know when we do this all and all the awesome horror, horror movie news that's coming up. It's going to be a crazy week, so it's a good time to do that. Love your all's fucking faces. Thanks for watching this. I hope you guys have a great day. Halloween never ends, suck my fucking dick, and I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box, or suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS, cause Halloween never ends.